Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode at Wackerash Gaming. My dear mammals, things has been very busy lately up in the Gorilla Mountains. To make matters worse, what's on earth is going on in King's Group HQ, someone definitely has been dreaming a bit too much. Changes are being made, for the sake of making changes. There has been so many illogical changes added, and very few logical changes being implemented. Following my previous video, where I shared with you the upcoming changes to Mining Mayhem, I did say I wanted to share more details with you, but I just ran out of time. If you have not watched the video, please find it attached in the link above, or alternatively, please feel free to check it out in the link below. Many of you played Mining Mayhem yesterday, did you enjoy the latest changes to Mining Mayhem? Maybe we should change the name to Mining Boredom? You would be glad to know that the infected is no more on day 2 onwards of Mining Boredom. Hallelujah, thank the Lord. I'm just going to give a quick recap of the infected monster as this is important. On the first day of the event, the mine exploration phase, your alliance will have to battle infected monsters at the R1 and R2 research labs in the mine exploration phase, you have to kill them to gain control of the research labs. When the infected monster loses a certain amount of health, they will drop a range of skills that can be picked up. The more skills you pick up the more skills you can stack, but it is limited to two skills type per alliance member. If you can no longer pick up any more skills it means you have reached the limit, I've only seen three different types of skills dropping in PTR and the game. A. Troop Morale Bonus. B. Instant Healing. C. Rally Expansion. These skills will drop when the monster health is at 80%, 50% and the last one at 10%. You have to defeat the monster at Lab R1 before you are allowed to move to Lab R2 to battle yet another infected monster. Are you kidding me? I just want to get this done and over with and fight? Nevertheless, you have to defeat the infected monster at Lab R2 before you are allowed to proceed towards the Lab R3 buildings. After 10 minutes of battling the infected monster, there will be an automatic reduction of the monster's defenses, thus technically making it easy to eliminate the infected monster. This reminds me of Trap with a twist. You are allowed to rally the infected monster and also solo attack the infected monster. I've not been able to test sufficient variations to tell you what provides the highest damage, but I would highly recommend. 1. Rally leader have to open 1 minutes rally for weak rally joiners to join. 2. Rally leader should use helicopter marches to solo attack the infected monster. Please do keep in mind that the rally leader stats are high enough to inflict significant damage on the infected monster. Whereas, a rally joiner should join rallies as their solo marches will have little impact. 3. Forget about collecting amethyst at R1 and R2, it's a waste of time. I'm not sure about you, but this is truly one of the most ridiculous update added. Many of us were screaming in the PTR server of how bad this update was. Many of us were shouting that many small alliances will struggle to kill the monster. Did they listen to us? Well they don't, and that is extremely frustrating. What are your thoughts on this? Please let me know in the comments below. There is another important change that has caught many of my fellow mammals off guard. The regen lab healing is now limited to 20% for each regen lab built. Therefore when two regen labs are built, you can only heal your troops up to a maximum of 40%. So please be careful as I can appreciate not everyone has 10 million troops to spare in battles. Also there is no longer the healing function at the regen lab, this is now moved to the skills menu. You are limited up to 3 times per day to heal your troops, and it replenishes every 30 minutes. However, there is a way to get your healing capabilities to 100%. Now let's rewind back, if you still remember the infected monster that dropped the skills? Well I picked up 2 healing skills ruins and was able to get an additional boost. This additional boost provided me with the ability to heal 100% of the troops I had in the hospital. Many in my alliance were struggling as to how to heal their troops. So please share this video to your friends, mammals and survivors, so the folks know how to heal their troops. Beautiful, right? If you are in the Jump and Gorilla Discord then you would have known that I recently started to play War and Order. 
War and Order is a real-time strategy, tower defense, and castle building game, and has received several global Google recommendations. It's a gorgeous 3D medieval game world which has many similarities to State of Survival, but it's even better. Raise a massive fantasy army for huge fully animated battles. Want to know more? Click on the link in the description below and join me in Realm 1549 of War and Order. Don't worry, I'm not leaving State of Survival, but War and Order truly gives me the PvP experience that I yearn for. State of Survival was meant to be a PvP game, yet it's become a truly mundane game with the primary goal of killing monsters and spending money on repetitive money-grabbing events. If you truly like PvP in a medieval game world, then War and Order is the game for you. See you there my fellow mammals. That's all folks, thanks for watching. If you like my videos do smash the subscribe button, leave a comment and turn on your notification bell for more amazing videos.